next, head over to day 5.1, the average height exercise. Now, the instructions are that you're going to write a program that's going to calculate the average student height from a list of heights. So, for example, let's say we had a list of student heights that looks something like this. Then you're going to be using a for loop, hopefully, to figure out the average. And the average can be calculated by adding up everybody's height and then dividing it by the number of students inside the list. And then I want you to round it to the nearest whole number. Now, notice how we've got some starting code here, and this is just for us to be able to input a list of student heights for testing and see if your code actually works. So if you go ahead and run the code, then you'll notice that it asks you for a list of student heights and the input is going to look something like this. They're just going to be a bunch of numbers separated by a space. So if I go ahead and paste that in there, then I hit enter, then notice how this line on line five is going to print it out just as a normal list full of numbers. Now, Python has some really useful functions as we've seen. We've seen that we could use the len function to calculate the size of a particular list. So if I go ahead and print my length of student heights, and then I paste my student heights in here, then you can see that I get five printed by calculating the number of items in here. Now, Python also has something called sum, and this gives us the total of all the items from a list. So in this case, all of these added up would be 857. Now, your job, though, is to figure out how these functions actually work under the hood. In order to fully complete this challenge, you can't use the len function or the sum function. Instead, you have to figure out another way through the use of for loops where you can add each of the items inside the list together and you can use a for loop to figure out how many items there are in this list and use that to calculate the average. So you can't use either of these functions and instead you have to rely on what you learned in the last lesson to complete this challenge. So have a think about it and once you're ready, give that a go. Now we know that we can't use either of these functions, the sum function or the length function, because if we could, then this challenge would be super easy and we would be able to calculate the average by getting the total height, by getting the sum of all the items inside student heights. And then we could calculate the number of students by using the length function to calculate the number of items inside the list. And then we would get the average height by dividing the total height by the number of students. And then we would be able to round this value off and print it out. But this, as you've noticed, doesn't use a single for loop. And the last thing we learned about was a for loop. So this is definitely not the right way to solve the challenge. It works, but what I wanted you to do is to figure out how the sum and the len functions work under the hood. How is it actually implemented? And to do that, we have to use a for loop. So let's have a think about how we would first tackle this one, where we get the total of all the items inside student heights. So we basically want to add each of them together until we get the total. Now, we can do this by simply using a for loop, as you've learned in the last lesson. So if we start off total height as zero, and then we write a for loop and we say for height in student heights, and then we add a colon, then now we're going to loop through each of the heights inside this list and we're going to add it to our total height. So we can say total height equals previous value of total height plus height, or as you might remember, the shortened version of this is just total height plus equals each of the heights. So now we can go ahead and check whether if this worked by printing out the final value of total height. 
And notice how I'm doing it outside the loop by making sure that it's not indented like this. So let's run our code and I'm going to paste in those numbers as the demo numbers. And then we get the value total height is 857, which if you take a calculator, you'll be able to verify it's exactly right. So now we've basically replicated how the sum function works. And now we can try and replicate how the len function works. We know that basically the len function figures out how many items are in a particular list. How can we do this using a for loop instead? Well, what if we do something similar to what we did above, where we start off the number of students as zero, and then we write a for loop for student in student heights. And inside our for loop, all that we do is we add one to our number of students each time our for loop runs. And if you remember from the last lesson, I said that the for loop will run for as many times as there are items inside the list. If there are five items inside the list, then the for loop is going to run five times, which means this line of code is going to be called five times, which means we add five to our number of students and we end up with the total length of the list. So now let's go ahead and print this number of students out and run our code. And I'm going to paste in the same five numbers in the example input. And you can see that the first value that comes out is my total height. The second value is the length of the list, the number of items in the list, which is five. We can verify that. And the final one is the average, which matches up with the example output. So now let's get rid of our print statements by commenting them out. Now, one of the things I want to point out to you that you might have noticed is that in the first for loop, even though we're looping through the same list, I've called each of the items height. And in the second for loop, I've called them students. Now, whatever we name each of the items inside the list, it's totally up to you. You could call it H, you could call it X, you could call it basically anything you want, as long as you are consistent with using it inside the for loop. So if you're calling each of the items inside the list H, then when you're using it inside the for loop, when you're modifying it or doing something with it, then you're going to refer to it by the same name. Now, usually it's a good idea to give it the name, which is the singular form of each of the items in the list. For example, previously we had a list of fruits, so each item was called fruit, the singular form. And in this case, we have a bunch of heights, so each of them I've called height. In the second for loop, I've decided to call each of the items a student. Now in this case, even though you have two for loops, you can call them the same thing. But sometimes I find it a little bit confusing to have the same name in two for loops. I prefer it this way, but it's totally up to you. Just follow the good practice of using a singular form of whatever is contained in a list when you write a for loop like this, and you'll have less trouble down the line.